in the intense world of medical emergencies. One patient, three times stab wounds. There's nothing more extreme than a code red. So this is a two-car RTC. That's correct. It means there's an immediate threat to life. Got one male still trapped in the vehicle. In the West Midlands, a highly specialist team are on call 24-7, ready to race to these major traumas. Meet you in four minutes. By road and air. Zero, three, we are lifted from Cosford. Responding to the most severe 999 calls. Open up the Lucas device over there for me. Day and night. All right, well done. From car crashes. Yeah, just need to check. To stabbings. Are going to put some oxygen on your pals? Here, where time is critical, lives will be saved. Ah. On roadsides, in back gardens, and inside homes. It's okay, coming off the chest. These emergency doctors and paramedics use cutting edge trauma techniques and surgery normally only seen in operating theatres to save people from almost certain death. Oh, sorry, mate. I oh, know, mate. I oh, know. We're going to sort you out. Filmed over two months with the critical care team. Ready, set, slide. We captured every vital second as these specialist crews work to save lives. On roll. Ready, steady, roll. Tonight... He's got a traumatic brain injury. A head-on collision leaves a man fighting for his life. We have to presume he's bleeding in his brain. Multiple stabbings in a nightclub. Oh, my God, please. Hey, man, right, in fact, with the ambulance, ambulance mate, all right. A child has a deadly allergic reaction. Can you do this medical alert? This swelling is getting more pronounced. Oh, sure. yeah. And a motorbike accident leaves a man in agony. Well, just keep it in mind that open pelvis. So I've checked the critical care drugs. I'm happy with those. Lovely. You've got all your armory there, Mark. That's fine, I'm happy. It's Saturday night in Oldbury, and Dr Mark Nash and critical care paramedic Colin Apps are about to start a 12-hour shift. You could argue that Saturday nights, people are out more likely to be out having a drink, enjoying themselves, and therefore later on in the evening we might get some fights. Road accidents increase when people have been out drinking, but yes, there are possibly certain patterns to what we might see on a Saturday, but we will go open-minded to everything like we always do and see what happens. I'm a taxi driver. I've seen a just accident on uh, by the mosque before the roundabout. OK, and how many vehicles are involved? Just only one vehicle. Is there someone in there as well? It's a person breathing. One second. Hello. Hello, is the patient breathing and conscious? Yes. No. There's one patient. He's grunting. His hands are cold. Is he away? No. No, no. no. OK. No response is somebody starting CPR? Yeah. Is he trapped within the car? I think you'll need to have a roof after him out. We're coming on blue lights and sirens as quick as we can, OK? No, I need to receive. Thank you. Police, fire brigade and the ambulance service are all en route to the scene. But with a man's life in danger, Mark and Colin are also needed. Never good, never good. Road tough accident, I think car versus wall. Good mix of things coming through, giving us unconscious and giving us uh, cardiac arrest. It's unclear if the driver has suffered a cardiac arrest and crashed his car, or his injuries are so severe that he has lost consciousness. Either way, he needs urgent critical care. As the other emergency services converge on scene, Mark and Colin must brace themselves for what they will find. None on scene. What do I So there are cars in front of this thing, just be aware there's people there. Yeah. Arriving at the crash site, they discover the ambulance crew have managed to get the man out of the badly wrecked car. The dashboard is completely crushed and the horn still blaring. Guys, do you want to give us some space so we can work with it, yeah? A large group of passers-by have gathered. It's mine across 
car, two sets of three. Okay. So we've whipped to make. Okay. It's got a massive heading. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. The 38-year-old man was driving back from seeing a friend when his car left the road and hit a wall. Thanks for your help, guys. Just move that way. He is completely unresponsive. He has a hole in his skull and his brain is exposed. Don't worry about the collar, guys. We're going we're we're to put a tube down him and go from there. Cool. We're going to do it after a drunk son. Yeah, cool. The man's breathing is so faint, his heart could stop at any moment. Mark's only option to try and stabilize him is to put him into an induced coma so he can take over his breathing. From our point of view, we can do it here. Can't we? I think we've got enough space here, haven't we? Yeah, we'll do it here. As they prepare to perform this major life saving intervention. Guys, is there. I know he's got the wound on the one side of his head, but there's nothing on the other side, is there? Mark. They nearly got him strapped on, so we might as well just lift yeah, him up onto there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely fine. Mark and Colin know it's down to them and the crew to get him to hospital alive. Carl, you can just stay there and just rotate round, can't you? Ambulance service with Asian breathing. I've got two stuff in. I've got two stuff in. Yeah, two stuff in. What are you doing? 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 What are you Police and ambulance have been dispatched to the nightclub where the attacks have taken place. Reducing the number of deaths from stabbings is one of the critical care team's main objectives. So paramedic Ian Locke and Dr. Ravi Chauhan are also en route. The fight is still going on uh, this location. Um, so offenders are on the fight going on in the background. For Ian and Ravi, being called to a stabbing is far from unusual. In the West Midlands, there are around 60 stabbings a week. Well, so the update from there is there's a large fight and reports of two people stabbed. Um, the fight is apparently, apparently still ongoing. So. With the attackers still believed to be on scene, Ian and Ravi wait until the police give them the all clear. West Midlands Ambulance Service deal with around a 1,000 casualties from road traffic incidents every year. I've lost count of the amount of fatal RTCs that I've been to in my ambulance service career. Rescuing the injured in these fast-moving, dangerous environments relies on absolute teamwork from police, fire brigade, ambulance and the critical care team. We've got two OMs running on this and a total of three DMAs in yourself over working with other services, you know, that it's not just like one person, it's just like everybody doing like a little bit. And actually, when you sort of step back and you see it all sort of unfolding, it, it, it is really good and not, they're like some of the best in the country, so you can't really ask for a better bunch to work with. Check the battery on this before we uh, do anything else. The battery's full, that's good. 39-year-old Pete Edwards has been part of the critical care team for the past two years. Like all team members, his specialist training means Pete has the skills and equipment to treat critically ill patients, often making the difference between life and death. This is, this is something that you'd see in hospital every day, you know, this sort of equipment, as are these ventilators that we have in this blue bag, you know, it's, it's stuff that's frequently used in hospital and it's now coming into the pre-hospital setting as well. This can be used to take away human errors sometimes or to, to again, to free up a pair of hands, you, you know, you don't have to focus while well, this is doing what it's set up to do, you can concentrate on something else, so quite handy. Ambulance service is the patient breathing. Yes, he is breathing. A motorcycle has been thrown off his motorbike. 
literally hit the other lane. His bike hit the central reservation. He's actually in the opposite side of the road, um, going the opposite way. He's not moved um, since he's been not so bad. No, no, no. And he's, he's still in the other lane. He's still in the middle of the road. He is, yeah, he is. He's in the middle of the road, lying on the floor in the oncoming traffic. He is breathing, but he's in a lot of pain. Um, he can't feel his hip. Pain in his right shoulder, right knee, right hip, and left knee. Has he taken his helmet off? No, 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 we have an instant on. Yeah, that's good. Yes, yes, yes. You yes. Leave the helmet on. A serious motorcycle versus car accident can be a code red emergency. An ambulance has been sent, but critical care backup is also needed. Minimal protection on a motorcycle. I mean, the head's obviously protected with a helmet, but uh, the rest of the body's exposed, and, and even the helmet, I mean, with a decent enough impact, it'll still cause a really significant head injury. Some of the things we always look out for with a motorcyclist is a fractured pelvis, because that, that can be quite rapidly life-threatening. How are you doing, all right? So we've got Ian here. Ian. Hello, Ian. I'm Pete, one of the CCPs. Okay. So, at the moment, we're complaining of right shoulder pain. That's yep. the biggest uh, pain area that we've got at the moment. Yep. Uh, right hip, left knee. On the busy A34, a car caused 53 year old wire fitter Ian to hit the curb, throwing him off his bike across the grass verge, narrowly missing the oncoming traffic. I know it's painful. I'm ever so sorry. We need to get you out of the cold. We're just going to lift you up, get you in the warm, we'll get you something for the pain, mate, all right? He's come quite a distance off his bike. The ambulance crew members have immobilised Ian's neck and spine. If he has broken his back, moving him risks damaging his spinal cord and leaving him with permanent disabilities. I'm just going to let Control know what's going on from the scene. 7062. Number of patients is one motorcyclist. So far, complaining of pain in his right hip and right shoulder. Uh, we're just going to get him on the vehicle. We'll do a proper assessment once on board and uh, get you an at me shortly. Cheers. You all right, mate? Do you know him? Is he your dad? He's all right, OK? We've just got him assessed. He's been knocked off his bike, but he's talking to us. He's conscious. Ian's concerned son has arrived on scene. He was called by one of the witnesses to the accident. Don't worry, we're going to look after him, all right? And we'll get him sorted. Ian, mate, yeah. where's the most...? Oh! The slightest movement has Ian screaming in agony. The signs are this could be a very serious injury. At the moment, I'm concerned about his pelvis because he's complaining some pain in the hip on the right side. If anybody's in a position to start while, while they're stripping off, get some obs. Shall they? OK. We'll just keep it in mind, open pelvis. An open book fracture of the pelvis is one of the deadliest injuries because the pelvis contains major blood vessels, which, if damaged, can lead to significant blood loss and cause the patient to go into shock and die. Yeah. Lots of flags. Critical care paramedic Ian Locke and Dr Ravi Chauhan are en route to a multiple stabbing. A fight has broken out at a crowded nightclub, leaving two victims in its wake. Right, back away, or we're not going nowhere, yeah? The scene is too dangerous and volatile for our crew to continue filming, but Ravi's body cam keeps recording the unfolding drama. Cheers, All right. Thanks, mate. Despite the danger to themselves, Ravi and Ian know if they don't treat their patients quickly, they could die. He's got two stab wheels to his lower back. OK, yeah. There's one with a single stab wheel to the upper thorax at the back. OK. There. Buddy, buddy, hey, hey, go on, in front with the ambulance, mate, all right? Just have a little seat for me, just so we can have a look, mate, all right? A single knife wound can sever a major artery, causing death within five minutes. Two, there and there. Yeah, I know. 
OK. Uh, just sit here for a second. Just sit, just sit here. All right. Just lean forward. Putting a little dressing on your back. All right, mate. I'm all over Yeah, but no, you're not. You're just... Ian needs to check the first victim to determine whether his wounds are life-threatening. Right, just relax for us, mate. OK. But it's a tense and aggressive situation. Right, well, well, not now, you won't. Not now, buddy. Not now. Just relax. Just, 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 all right? just, look, just, just be. Just listen to us. Just sit, sit down. All right? Let us just do what we need to do. All right? The man has two stab wounds and needs hospital attention. But Ian's assessed his life isn't in immediate danger. You need to go to hospital, mate. You need to go to hospital. All right. You do, mate. You do. Yeah, we're just, we're just going to go and look at him, mate. They move on to find and assess the other stab victim. You are, sir. You're all right, mate. Okay, yeah, yeah, what's happened? So he's been. He's got stab right now. Okay, fine. Just take this off for a second, mate. What way, that was? Huh? Just for a second, please. Yeah, just take the whole thing off. Yo, who's that? The wound is close to both heart and left lung. At the very least, there's likely to be internal bleeding. Uh, just sit back for a second. Oh, yeah, I need to. I need to. Oh, he's checking that you've got no other injuries. Uh, all right. Are you finding it difficult to breathe? I can't breathe. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. That's all right. So I just, I need to sit back for a second. Whoa, wait there, wait there, wait there. No, 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 no. Boss, it hurts. OK, it hurts on this side, yeah? It hurts. OK, take a big breath in. Like, I ain't OK. The wound may only be an inch wide, but Ravi knows it could have caused significant damage. Keep that on for a second. Are you all right walking out? I don't know. All right, I'll get you a chair. If you, um, if you get that, if you get a chair, mate, He's got less okay. chest. He's got worsening like surgical emphysema. Uh, starting to swell around his back. Okay. Ravi suspects the knife has punctured his patient's lung, a potentially fatal condition that could cause respiratory failure. Listen, what I need you to do, I need you to get into this chair. Right, we need to get into the ambulance quickly, all right? All right, sit back. Two stab wounds okay. here and here. One stab wound right arm. Issues he's been GCS 15 throughout. Last blood pressure was that. He's had a gram of TX there, he's got IV access there. He needs to go on the back, he needs to go up to QE. I'll get some fluids and keep an eye on him. Outside, Ian hands over one victim with multiple stab wounds to the ambulance crew. Should we, should we go with that one? Both he and Ravi will travel in the other ambulance with the more seriously injured victim. They take him to the Queen Elizabeth Major Trauma Centre in Birmingham. He is one of five stabbing victims that are treated here every week. I'm feeling a little bit precious this morning. <laughs> Starting his first shift back from holiday is critical care paramedic Ryan James. So I'm hoping for a nice little relaxed shift, ease myself back into the working week. But, you know, I would think, with my luck, um, we're probably going to be uh, pretty busy. Because um, it's always the case, isn't it? If you want a, a nice ease back into your working week, then uh, it's never going to be. 7062. Just checking you there, you're checking all of that business over. Yep, I'm here, matey. Good to go. Uh, look after me today. It's my first day back off my holiday. Received. <laughs> oh. Hello, you speak to the ambulance service. It's the patient breathing. Oh. Yeah, he, he and, just and, walked and, out and fell right over. He thinks he's broke his ankle. All he right. slipped on the ground, it's wet. And it's his ankle that he thinks he's broken? Yeah. Has he got an obvious deformity? Have Did you got an obvious deformity on it? Did he say it's going the other way? He said it's deformed. We will be there too very shortly. Yeah, OK, okay. then. According to the update that I've just received, this gentleman has got a 
angulated, um, complicated fracture. Basically, his foot is facing a different way to where it should be facing. And we have got some alternative analgesia uh, that the crews don't carry in the form of um, intravenous ketamine. With complex fractures, there is a risk that the deformed broken bones are interfering with blood supply to his foot. The crew still not have been, so no update, or you can't keep you running over. 62, Roger, always do. Ryan may have to perform an emergency intervention to realign the foot, an agonising procedure that requires skilled use of high-strength sedatives. What I shall do is we're just pulling up in about 30 seconds. We'll go and have a chat, see if we can assist. It looks like he's not going to get the post-holiday easy ride he was hoping for. Here we go. The critical care team in Midlands Air Ambulance serves a population of over 6 million people. Cooper is a 13-year-old male, jumped, query fallen from uh, an upstairs window. It was set up following a study on trauma survival rates that found providing hospital-level care and decision-making at the roadside could save more lives. Bringing the hospital to the patient, that has a really high impact on patients, such that you can get them to hospital in a much stronger and more stable position than they would otherwise have been. In Wensbury, eight miles northwest of Birmingham. Right, guys, so current, current plan, you're doing a grand job. What we're going to do in a minute is we're going to go up onto the trolley there. Dr Mark Nash and critical care paramedic Colin Apps are trying to save the life of a 38-year-old driver who is unconscious with a serious head trauma and may be suffering from a potentially fatal bleed on the brain. Colin's going to be on the right-hand side of all the airway kit. What we're trying to do, as we can do, is we'll just move the monitor down to be long time. Is that OK? Does it make sense? Yeah. yeah. Cool. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do ketamine, yeah. sucks, and some rock afterwards, and then we can get him from there. And he's pretty fast at the moment. We're going to be literally going straight up there, and then we're going to, we're going to put a tube down him and go from there. The patient could die at any moment. So Mark, a consultant anaesthetist at University Hospital North Midlands, is going to place him in a medically induced coma so they can control his breathing and protect the vital supply of oxygen to his brain and organs. Oh, have you got, your, got the VL? Yeah, it's yep. already. I'm just going to do a mental check through. So, scope, yeah. Tube, you've got a bit of gel on it. I oh, just a bit strange in the end. There's the KY. Succinamethonium and rocuronium are two fast-acting muscle relaxants that will temporarily paralyse the man's muscles. A mechanical ventilator will then breathe for him. Just pop them on his chest for now. We don't need them taped in. Are you ready to lift and come onto here? So just come round and spin round. Yeah, head, head there. With the help of one of the bystanders, an off-duty paramedic, the crew lift the man onto the stretcher to carry out the procedure which is normally performed in a hospital. You happy at the top end? Yep. Uh, put a blanket over his chest if we can. Have we got access yet? We need two lots of IV access then. Let's have a look at his eyes. In the dark, by the side of the road, Mark can't afford to make any mistakes. So before he administers the powerful drugs, he checks to see if there's been any change in his condition. Stephanie eyes is one, verbal one, and then it's just motor is varying. As if anything, he's doing abnormal flexion, isn't he? Right, monitor eyes, just want to look at the monitor. So just run back on, so we've got ECG on. If we, I'm about to try and do blood pressure again, because we've not really seen one at all. He's a bit cold, isn't he, unfortunately? Just doing a blood pressure at the moment. Is he fighting on that arm, or is it just...? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just think about the blood pressure, why it's going... The man's condition is deteriorating. He has an irregular heartbeat and low blood pressure. I think we're going to have to work pragmatically on what we've got, Cole. Right, it's, it's struggling with the erratic rate. He, he's going to do something very strange with us in a minute, Cole. Yeah. He could go into cardiac arrest at any moment. They need to act fast. Guys, for those of you who haven't seen him before, in a minute he's going to have a bit of a twitch as the paralysis kicks in. I'm going to pop the tube down. OK. Right, ready. Time check. You happy, Cole? Yeah. Yep. 
quarter two. Yep, quarter two. Yeah, I think everything is very cold. It's a hot right. I'm gonna. This is gonna be a token fifty. Okay, and sucks is going through now. The dose of sucks will take a minute to take effect. Okay. It's quite um, quite small. Let me know when you ready to. Yeah, that's the drug kicking in. Quite a slow circulation, though, actually. As the drugs kick in, the muscles in the man's arms convulse. He is now completely paralysed, unable to even breathe for himself. OK, all, all yours. Colin now has five minutes to get the breathing tube in place and start ventilating him, otherwise he will die. Epiglottis, grade one. Yeah. Already? Yeah, he's got just a large epigrossus. OK, bougie's through. Yeah, Ready for that. the tube? The effect of the paralysing drugs lasts for less than 30 minutes, so it will need constant monitoring to avoid any conflict between his body's natural breathing and the ventilator. Just hold the tube for me, mate. Uh, we we'll go with 820 at the teeth. OK, got the tube. Yep, tube, bougie yeah. out. Okay, fine. And again, yeah, we've got good movement. Okay, I'm coming off the cricoid. I'm going to give him some rock because I can feel him moving already. <laughs> Colin will squeeze air into his lungs manually until he can be attached to the ventilator. The rock's in. Okay, happy? Yeah. If we can start wrapping him up. Yes. So have your fluids at the top there, aren't you? Yeah. yeah so let's start. Keeping the warmth in if we can do. Um, suction can come away. Yes. Right, happy there, Cole? Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, thank you. Guys, anyone seen anything we've missed? So we're happy, airway secure, we're breathing nicely. We are. Okay, Sat, Sat's are still very erratic. I don't think we can make any comments on that at the moment. It's too cold. All right, we'll get him on the ventilator as soon as he's in the back of the ambulance then. You ready? <coughs> well, how far is it to QE from here? Yeah. 20 minutes. Mark and Colin will travel with the patient to provide critical care throughout the journey. So, um, male unclear of the mechanism. It seems to be cars involved. Mark updates controls so they can alert the hospital. He has, uh, looks like an open brain injury. As far as we can see, there's an injury to his back of his head, which definitely was a flap of skin, and so he's got a traumatic brain injury. So we have to presume he's bleeding in his brain. So he's now been RSI. ETA, I think we're going for should be 15 minutes. We'll say 15 minutes. 15 minutes out, Mark administers another dose of the muscle relaxant combined with a sedative. At this moment in time, we don't want him to be straining against any of what we're doing. We just want to keep it nice and steady and flat. The numbers we've got on the screen are perfect for us at the moment, and so if we can keep him just the way he is until we get to the hospital, then that's, that's better for us, better for the patient. Um, they can then reassess. Once they've got the scan, they can make a decision what they're going to do after that. Arriving at hospital, time is critical. The man is taken directly to the emergency doctors. That patient there, um, the longer he went without his airway being protected and us controlling the oxygen and the carbon dioxide levels, the more damage that potentially could happen to his brain. And what we hope is that by doing that early intervention, a good you know, 45 minutes before he got to hospital, um, we uh, hopefully helped stabilise him a bit and made a difference. And that's, that is our bread and butter, to go to the sick patients, work with the crews on infrequent events for them, but frequent for us. Twelve miles away in Coesley. Hello. Critical care paramedic Ryan has just arrived at the home of a man who has badly broken his ankle. The bones are protruding through the skin. What's happening? Hi, Adrian. He slipped outside and he thinks his ankle displaced. He's not sure whether it's gone outwards or inwards. Sure. Forty-seven-year-old Adrian lives with his parents. After he fell, he managed to drag himself back inside, and his father called 999. Not the Sunday morning you were hoping for, then? No, not really. 
No. Ready I know, I've just noticed you've got Sunday your dinner. Sunday roast all prepared, ready to go. <laughs> a complex open fracture must be quickly realigned to prevent serious infections and re-establish blood flow to the foot. It's a procedure Ryan has done many times. He's clicked it three times back into alignment. <gasps> Have you actually? What, before these ladies yeah. got here? But today, his skills won't be needed. Wow, mate, I can't believe you've you've put that back into <laughs> alignment. <laughs> you know. <laughs> what, you, what, what, what made you do that, do you think? Was it just hurting too much, or...? Yeah, well, I thought I was going to try to get up. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, I ain't going to get up without the way it was, so... Yeah. Just... How far angulated was it? How far...? Really? Blimey. Back old school treatment. I don't even know why you needed us to arrive, really. <laughs> Adrian's dexterity has served him well. Incredibly, he managed to manipulate the bones back into alignment himself. A delicate and agonising procedure that usually requires high-strength painkillers and sedatives. You're a brave chap. I'm surprised you haven't just called a taxi and hobbled on in there. There you go. All right, hold that on your mouth and nose. Make a tight seal, that's it, and then just breathe that through. And then we'll get you, get you to a, a state of mind where you're not worried about what we're doing, and then uh, we can pop your foot on that splint and get you splinted. Do you want to do leg or splint? Happy his pain-tolerant patient doesn't need any advanced pain relief, Ryan continues to give Adrian gas and air to take the edge off any discomfort he may feel. Happy? I'll go above and below. You slide it up. Okay, I'm just gonna lift your leg up now, okay? Nice deep breath. Nice cool up. Nice circulation. Keep going. Keep going. You've got the old uh, that's it on that side. Right, what this is just gonna do is just gonna tighten up around your leg and go firm, okay. To stop the bones coming out of alignment on the journey. The ankle is encased in a vacuum splint. Ready, set, lift. That's it. Keep your arms in, mate. Happy? Ready, set, lower. Once he's on the ambulance... All right, ladies, take care. Hi. Nice to meet you. All the best, mate. Ryan is happy to leave Adrian in the care of the crew while he gets ready for his next emergency. He's clicked it three times back into normal alignment. Um, before the ambulance crew and myself got there. So pretty impressive, really. Um, strength and determination of Adrian to be able to have done that to himself, um, you know, is, is commendable. You don't see that very often. Ambulance service, the patient brings them. Uh, yes, it's my two-year-old daughter. And what's the reason for the call today? She cannot open eyes, full swelling on her face. And it's her whole face that's swollen? Whole face, especially eyes. Now she wants to sleep. OK, if you pick her up, does she go limp poor floppy like a rag doll? Oh, yes, everything. Yeah. Seems floppy. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Has she had a very severe allergic reaction before? Never, ever. We have got that help coming as quickly as we can. Just get those breaks. The patient has bilateral wheezes and evidence of facial swelling. Do we got any history on this address? Uh, what they're allergic to, I don't know. Uh, I can't see any evidence of any breaks. No worries. An ambulance has been dispatched to the address, but a 22-month-old child suffering severe allergic reaction is a code red emergency, so critical care paramedic Steve Mason has also been scrambled. If they've got facial swelling, you need to be concerned about, you know, the airway being closed and then that compromising the patient because, obviously, they haven't got an airway, they can't breathe, and there's some abnormal soundings on on this patient's lungs, so a wheeze can indicate that, you know, the airways are quite tight and constricted, so well, it can be life-threatening. The child's worried mother has reported her breathing is laboured. 
Steve knows in these emergencies, every second counts. Hey, and have you got any medical problems? No. And have you got any allergies? No. Can you lift your right leg up a little bit? Yeah? Nice, no, okay. In Birmingham, Ian, a 53-year-old motorcyclist, has been thrown off his bike, and critical care paramedic Pete has not yet ruled out a fractured pelvis, which could be life-threatening. Uh, sorry, and your right leg? Is that any pain? Yes. Where? In here. In here. OK. Yeah, we'll I suspect it's more hip at the moment. He's moving all his limbs, he's lifting his legs, which is... ..cos we, we were concerned about his pelvis, but he can lift his legs, which I think that's a, a positive sign in terms of... Uh, ..hopefully it's more hip than it is a true pelvis injury. But where's that pain, Ian, in your hip? Yeah, I'm Ian, can you turn your, this foot, can you turn it to the side? He's able to rotate it. Yeah. And this one, and can you try and lift it again a bit? Hurts. Where about? Okay, OK, relax. He's, he's holding his leg up. Yeah. OK. So, so, like, anatomically, he looks in line, his lung bones are intact. So, if anything, since the time we've been with him, his heart rate has actually gone down. Yeah. So I think if there's any, if that was pelvis and he was bleeding, there's, you know, his heart rate would go up potentially. He, he'd look pale and sweaty. He's not. He can lift both legs, and I think the pain is more on the side. So I think that's more hip than it is a open pelvis. Pete doesn't think this is a life-threatening open book pelvic fracture, but without the benefit of an X-ray, he can't rule out any other fractures. That's it. Okay, if he's, um, he's pulling that, there's another one out. Yeah. Ian's right arm and shoulder are giving Pete cause for concern. Bear with us, Ian. Is it the shoulder, Ian, that's the worst? Ian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the shoulder, yeah? You have to excuse my language, but I'm going to be quiet with it. All right. Ian, bear with us. We're going to get you some pain relief as soon as we can get to one of your arms, mate. All right. Uh, I mean, just in his position, yeah. it looks lower than the left shoulder yeah, yeah. at the minute. He's got severe pain in his right shoulder, so I suspect he's got a, a fracture dislocation somewhere yeah. there. No, no. Details of how the crash happened will help Pete understand his chest and shoulder injuries. Rough idea, Ian. Do you know how fast you were going when you collided with a car? No. And did you go through the air or did you slide across the floor? No, I hit the car. As soon as I hit the car, it was on lost it. Hit the cone, hit the curb, and then I just fell off the bike. So you've just fallen off, you didn't go like flying through the air, you don't? Yeah, yeah, hit the curb, I just slid. And it sent you up in the air, did it? Yeah, you can see. Well, I don't the... know whether it went off or the handlebars, or I just couldn't save it. Okay, no worries. You see the scrape marks as I say on the road. Take a big deep breath in for me. And out. Ian's breathing is normal, but he has a suspected dislocated shoulder and a hip injury. Um, can I just confirm that with you? IV paracetamol, 07 2021. Yeah. All right. OK. And we found no other injuries, have we? Okay. Pete contacts Control, who will alert the hospital of Ian's arrival. So, yeah, what I'll probably do then, we'll send him to Sandwell, and um, I think I don't need to travel. Bye bye. OK, I'll leave you to it. All right. Nice. No, thanks a lot. All the best, Ian. Yeah. Take care. See you now. He did have a lot of protective gear on, which is a good thing, but we still have to be really cautious about injuries and, you know, have a high uh, suspicion. We're a bit concerned about his pelvis, but what we class as a true life-threatening open pelvis fracture, I, I think that's unlikely in his case. If he's got a shoulder dislocation or a fracture, we're going to get him to the nearest hospital, which is a trauma unit, so they'll be able to deal with him. In Smethwick, Steve has just arrived at the house of 22-month-old Anit, who has a wheezing chest and an increasingly puffy face. It's got a lot worse in the 10 minutes. What, what, what has she sort of been allergic to, do you know? All indications of a serious allergic reaction that needs emergency treatment. The only thing that she's had is Weetabix. Weetabix, OK. We don't know anything else to 
obviously what what it could be, but she had wheat to fix last week and was fine, wasn't okay. she? Every day she had every day. Every day yeah. Right, okay. we know she had every day, so both things normal okay. never. Has this happened before at all or? No. My no. other daughter had this reaction before because she had a reaction for from nuts, but okay. not she never had. Okay. After her usual breakfast, Anit's face started swelling and she became worryingly subdued. So her mum rang 999. So we're happy with her sats at the moment. Yeah. So I think what we'll do, because I'm unsure what's going on, if That's we just head to uh, the children's, children's now, yeah. yeah. Although Anit seems very calm, allergic reactions in children can quickly escalate from mild itch to life-endangering anaphylactic shock. We'll just take her in. Uh, I just said it is quite a bad reaction to life. OK, jump on. There's nothing to worry about, Mum, OK? I'm just going to take him to the right uh, hospital, mm -hmm. just for BSS, OK? Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah, yeah, whenever you're ready, yeah. Can you sit there, please, yeah. Mum? Is that OK? If her condition worsens, the best place for a need to be is in hospital. So Steve decides to get her there as quickly as possible with minimum fuss and intervention. <laughs> oh, dear me. Can you do this uh, medical alert, please? He will make the three-mile journey to the nearest children's unit with Anit, calling control to prep the hospital for her arrival. A 22-month-old. She's developed a sort of swelling to her eyes uh, and to her sort of face area. This swelling is getting more pronounced, so we're just going to uh, alert back into uh, Sandwell, please. And we'll be at Sandwell in how long? Uh, in about five minutes. That's fine. And this is unlike her to be nice and calm like this. Yeah, so her eyes have developed since I've been here a little bit, yeah. It's developed quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. She just looks a bit uncomfortable with all the itching. If that swelling gets really bad, uh, affects the tongue, closes off the airway, then you've got potential airway issue. You've got no oxygen going into that patient. If, if the airway completely occludes, then you know, uh, what we need to do is, is try and act on that quickly to sort of uh, stop that. So you said your other child suffers with this. Yeah. What, what, has she been diagnosed with anything at all, or...? She had allergy from her sometimes. Nuts. This time, she's allergy, I see, not her. OK, and uh, does she carry a, an EpiPen around with her? And, she's no. normally fit and fine, so the thing that was just once she had allergy from them. OK, no worries. In the last five years, the number of children hospitalised with life-threatening allergic reactions rose by 72%. I'm concerned that she's got some swelling going on, so she's got a reaction to something. So whatever's going on, you know, it, it, it is looking at. She's a bit uncomfortable because she's scratching. You like camera, really? Arriving in hospital, Anita is carried through to the waiting paediatric doctors. Really, with that patient, I think the more we would have done to her, the more stressed she would have become. So, hands-off approach, let her watch uh, something on, on the phone, and she was nice and calm all the way in, and we just got her in, which was great. <laughs>